and thank you for joining me in this Aries new moon symbols video where we go through all the different symbols involved with this Aries new moon to see what the energy is all about. We're going to start off with astrology and this chart has so much energy right here. Just an incredible amount of energy. And we have one, two, three, four, and there's actually five planets in Aries. There's also Vesta in Aries, which is an asteroid. And she would actually be at the front. And then we have, of course, Jupiter in Aries as well. And then we have Venus and the North Node and Uranus and Taurus. And so a lot of people are going to say this is the penultimate, ultimate Aries new moon. But while I do think there are certain aspects of it, such as Venus being so far in the front of all these planets as though she's the leader, and then, of course, in Aries, Vesta is actually in the front of Jupiter as though she's the leader in Aries. So we have this strong female presence in this chart, especially since Taurus is ruled by Venus. But Aries is ruled by Mars. And Mars is right here. And he's not happy. He's been stuck in that sign in Gemini for a very long time. And he's going to be scooting over into Cancer pretty soon where he'll be at fall. So to me, this chart doesn't mean that we should be going full speed ahead. It doesn't mean that we should be completely initiating. The new moon is at zero degrees and zero is actually the womb of potential. It is the egg. It is not the chick that has been hatched. This is the womb of potential. So what this tells me is that this chart in particular, especially given that Neptune and Saturn are in Pisces together, and Pluto is just about to pop over into Aquarius, this is a chart that says it's time to plan. This is a time to plan for the change that's coming. We can see that Aries and Taurus energy has built up. And it's very interesting because in the story, the esoteric story, according to Edgar Casey, involving how spirit ended up in physical material reality, is that it rammed its way in during the age of Aries into physical material reality, which is symbolized by Taurus. So it's a very interesting symbolism that we have here, the ram and physical material reality, which is Taurus, we see it, a potential. This is like the beginning where spirit first entered the earth. We're kind of having that moment. But it was a while before spirit actually got used to being on the earth. And that's kind of what we're at here. This is like the potential moment. This is like a potential opportunity for evolution and upgrade. But this is the planning stage. This is the very first stage. And in manifestation, I always follow the medicine wheel. And if you're trying to manifest something, you start in the east with the rising sun. And that's the direction of air and planning. And that's what we should be doing this new moon. Not going full speed ahead, not rushing into anything, especially since we are going to have the culmination in Libra. And Libra is all about the extremes. Libra either goes one way or the other. And so if we go full bore right now, we're going to end up going into an extreme situation. And I don't think anybody wants that. I think we should be aiming for balance. And so this new moon, I would definitely focus on trying to hit that balance. I'm planning to hit that sweet spot in the middle, as they say, the middle path as opposed to one extreme or the other. So weigh your options, plan things, plan ahead. We're very going we're going into a very volatile energy next two weeks. The this moon cycle is definitely 
one of the craziest I've ever seen as we see Pluto enter Aquarius and it's very interesting that as Pluto exits Capricorn we've had bank failures just as we did 15 years ago when Pluto entered Capricorn and I will be talking about that in a Pluto video later this week so in this new moon let's plan this is a time to observe and plan not a time for a lot of action because more than likely you'll over respond and go into an extreme and we don't want that so that is the astrology of this new moon i'll move this out of the way and here are symbols for aries you notice the ram has the spiral similar to the spiral of life the spiral path of the seeker that I'm always talking about where you either ascend or you descend depending on your perception of reality and it is a fire sign and in alchemy fire is symbolized by the pyramid or a triangle which also represents the trinity as it takes two things coming together to form a new one and in addition to that our symbols for this new moon are the emperor, Hebrew letter He, and the emperor is a number four, and we have the sage, and it's a number 19. So cumulatively, this is an extremely wise gathering of men. He represents righteousness it's the righteous man and right action is basically anything that's service to the community that's basically what hay represents in the esoteric tradition hay represents a window so it represents your perspective so righteousness comes from a very specific perception of reality the emperor is the one who makes decisions for the entire empire. Again, this rec goes with um, planning. You can see the Aries symbol here on the stone cube. The cubes are always representative of the earth. So he's sitting on the earth, on materialism. He holds an ankh, and he actually forms, the way he is, he actually forms a specific alchemical symbol as well so he represents order in earthly things so again this recommends planning the four to quote Christopher Mateki is the door so we're at a doorway do we go in in it or do we not go into it what are we gonna do when we get to the other side of the door a lot of times when you're entering a situation you have to know some sort of plan am i going to go in is this a doctor's office am i going to go to the, the doctor's desk and reception and get checked in is this a restaurant do i go to the hostess station to get checked in do i go all the way to the quick service bar if it's a quick service restaurant whatever it is we need to plan for it before we actually commit and the sage obviously is the wisdom to of planning and with the number 19, that is the number of completion. It breaks down to 20, though, the number of two of duality. And so we have an opportunity here, a decision to make. And the question is, what decision are you going to make? And obviously, we're going to have to plan for it. So I want to go over the tools that I'm using for this new moon. For water, I'm using cinnamon. I can't really think of anything that represents fire more to me when it comes to scents than cinnamon. I mean, it kind of makes your nose tingle <laughs> like fire. Then for incense, I have a piece of dragon's blood, once I can find it. Give me one moment and I'll be right back. All right, here's our dragon's blood incense this particular cone's not very strong and you could use the diffuser for both water 
and air if you want, but I sometimes like mixing smells. And dragon's blood is a very protective, very protective smelling incense. I'm just going to go ahead and light this here. I felt that the backflow incense burner just brought that sense of wisdom, masculinity into this space. And for the mineral kingdom, I'm using a labradorite generator. I have Merkabas. This is sunstone, amethyst, tiger's eye, and clear quartz. Sunstone represents the sun, consciousness. It is a solar plexus gem. The amethyst represents the brow chakra, its perception. Tiger's eye is the stone of courage. And then clear, clear quartz is clarity and amplification. And then I went with some of the most high vibe stones that I have. This is azurite. Azurite is called a blueberry. And this is the priestessing stone. It's a beautiful stone. It's a very, very powerful third eye chakra stone for perception and perceiving divinity. I have a fluorite octahedron. And it represents eight, which is infinity. And then the green represents the heart. But fluorite is inspiration. It's brilliance. It brings to mind any a multitude of creative ideas. And so this is a great stone for students and for planning anything. Great stone if you use your mind a lot. And this is an apophyllite point. I love this stone. This is another really high vibe stone. Apophyllite is a crown chakra stone. And this one is meant to be put on your third eye chakra like this. And you can direct it, direct the energy. It's supposed to be like directing your perception of reality. Beautiful, very strong, very high vibe. Stone there as well. And to represent the spiral of the ram's horn and the spiral path of the seeker, this is an ammonite. You've seen me probably share this one before. This is one of my favorite stones. It's so beautiful. And it is a fossil, but it is a perfect example of that divine spiral and geometry that is so awesome. We're going to put that over there. And so there you have it. Everything points to this is a time of planning, consideration, thinking. I also have... Some clear quartz points. I don't know if I have the space on the grid. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and put those down for amplification. And I use the Merkabas on my grid because I wanted to represent the vehicle of movement, but not movement in the physical, but in the spiritual. So it's a very, pretty much went for much divinely inspired as I could with my grid for this particular new moon. I have to get the flash of the Labrador. Right? Oh, there we go. Let's see the flash of the Labrador. Right? This is one of the most beautiful Labradorites I've ever seen. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? So beautiful Labradorites. Labradorite is so fun. Right there. Oh, it's not even amazing. Okay. And then, of course, I have a red candle. And I've already lit that. And with that, pretty much it. There's our symbols for this new moon. Take this opportunity to plan. We have a lot going on. And I am going to use a single to play a little bit of music for you. So 
to help inspire you on this Aries new moon. I was trying to crawl over into my incense. <laughs> I'm going to use the singing bowl. I am creating music with my husband for you so that in the future, hopefully this is mostly going to be a recorded track with guitar instead of me just spontaneously playing. But I always incorporate music. It represents gratitude. And my intention with this new moon is, like I said, to plan. Have plans in place. No things are going to be volatile. Things are going to get weird. A lot of crazy energy. So enjoy the meditation. Enjoy meditating with the symbols. I'm actually going to move the bowl over here. <laughs> and until next time, thank you so much. Drop a heart in the comments. If you like this, so that the channel can grow and have a wonderful moon cycle, wonderful Aries new moon. Take the uh, ram by the horns. Let's spiral up, okay? We want to ascend in this spiral. We definitely don't want to descend.
Thank you for joining me and wishing you so many wondrous things and sending you so much love.